A week after the disaster, the two earthquakes that changed the lives of millions within seconds destroyed cities in 10 provinces in southern Turkey and large areas in northern Syria. The death toll stands at more than 36,000, but is likely to more than double. Among all these numbers, stories of people, those who survived the earthquake, who have been made homeless, those trying to escape the cities drowning in chaos and rubbles. When the earthquake struck, we went to Kahraman Marriage with some of my friends from my university. And we were there as the translators. Me and my friends, a team of five people, we counted before we left the area. And in total, five people, we saved 20 people with the Israeli team. And we saw the dead bodies of more than 500 people. The time frame for rescue operations is closing, but delegations from all over the world managed to pull out dozens of people alive from under the rubble. The Israeli team from the Home Front Command is counting 19 saved lives. But in Syria, the situation looks different. The Syrians, they lost the hope for the rescuing process in northwestern Syria because it's almost impossible to have a chance for have some people under the, the this rubble because for them to stay alive, already they don't have enough uh, conditions for, for, for have a good life. And, and of course, the weather is so cold and this is affecting uh, to them for, for not be able to survive for, for a long time. The disaster is not over yet. Those who survived are now displaced within the destroyed cities and are trying to get to safer areas here in Turkey. The reason why I'm here in Istanbul is that I had to save my family from what's going on in Kahraman Marish. To be honest, our duty just started. Because, yes, we saved some, but I lost so many friends. My friends lost so many family members. And our duty actually just starts right now. We were there. We saw what people did. We saw how people waited for their families, dead or alive. If dead, people waited their bodies to be at least intact. They wanted a grave for their families. And now we are here, and trust me, we will do anything we can to ask why this happened and who allowed this to happen. And I hope we will find who is guilty in this. The lack of organization and preparation in a region prone to earthquakes is exposing corruption and mismanagement in Turkey. Meanwhile, in Syria, humanitarian aid and rescuers have found it near impossible to arrive due to the unclear political situation in the opposition-held regions in a country entering its 12th year of war. More than one week after the earthquake, search and rescue teams will change their methods of operation from rescuing survivors to recovering the dead from the countless collapsed buildings. For people who are waiting on the streets of their former neighborhoods day and night, for whom what they've experienced is beyond comprehension, this will be hard to accept. And anger against politicians will smolder on.